Hello all, I'm Dr. Laura Sinnott, audiologist and audio engineer with Tuned. Today we're looking at some objective measurements of the Edemotic electronic earplugs, the Music Pro and the Music Pro Elite. The main reason I wanted to do objective measurements was because on their website, the descriptions of what these devices are doing it, uh, were very or are very vague. And I had been trying for over a year to contact someone at Edemotic to get some clarity. However, just as I was about to publish this video, an engineer from Edemotic finally got back to me, and now I do have the true technical specifications. The good news is that the results that I got match up pretty well with the technical specifications that Edemotic sent me. You're gonna hear me say in the video a couple times that the Music Pro Elite results don't match up well to the published website specifications, but again, it did match up pretty well to the real specs. So carry on. A warning, this video is gonna be a little bit more on the technical side, so grab your coffee, your matcha or your chaga chino, yes, that really exists and we're going to, as they say, dive in. The Music Pro is battery operated and it's been around for eons. It's very popular in marching band world and orchestra world. The verification measurements I performed support its reputation. It attenuates what it's supposed to attenuate. The sound fidelity is much higher compared to a non-electronic or passive earplug. There is a noise floor that you'll hear if you're listening to it in a quiet space. Although most of the time, if you're using an earplug, you're not in a quiet space. So I don't think that's a big deal. And then the one downside that everybody pretty much knows about is if sound enters the device around 100 or 105 dBA, um, you will hear some audible distortion or, or you might. The Music Pro Elite, the technical specifications are actually kind of unclear. The information on their websites different now than what it said when it first came out. And I have not been able to reach anybody. I've been trying for months and I cannot get formal clarification on the technical specs. And that's actually what prompted me to make these measurements and make this video. Both devices are very similar, but they're not identical. They both have two modes, one that reduces roughly 9 dB of sound and the other one that reduces 15 dB. They both let soft or medium level sounds through naturally, and then both actually amplify quiet sounds. Now I know for the audio engineers listening, soft sound is not the same as a low sound level. So I get that, I just have to say that. There are different methods to verify or test earplugs. Evidence suggests that the best method is what's called a REIT measurement or real ear attenuation at threshold. However, this isn't going to work really well with active earplugs because the sound isn't attenuated or reduced evenly. The input sound level determines how much attenuation there is. In nerd speak, it's adaptive. So another method is to perform what's called probe microphone measurements, or your audiologist might call it real ear measurements. And we normally use this special equipment to verify that a hearing aid is working properly um, in a person's ear. What you do is you stick a tiny little tube deep in your ear canal. The tube picks up the sound, sends it to a little microphone, and the sound pressure level, or the perceptual equivalent, loudness, is measured. It's like sticking a sound level meter right next to your eardrum. So what I did is I measured the response of the sound in my ear canal with nothing in my ear, so no earplug. And it shows us how the sound resonates, how it bounces around, essentially how sound behaves in my ear canal. And then I stuck the earplug in and made a second measurement. And you compare the two and that's how you can figure out what the earplug is doing. There are many known caveats to using probe microphone measurements. The probe tube can get squished and maybe affect the high frequency response. There can be a slit leak, which can affect the low frequency measurements. And the probe tube placement can be difficult sometimes. Although with the equipment I have, the Verifit 2, there's a beautiful probe tube placement check that is now there. I am so grateful for that. Thank you, AudioScan. But the biggest disclaimer is that 
it's what my colleague Heather Maliak actually always says. Ears are like snowflakes. No two are identical. And it's true. The, the pinna, the ear canal, everybody's ears are shaped differently and designed differently. So the response will be different in everyone's ear. But again, this will give us solid information about whether the earplug is doing what it should be doing. Something I always talk about with my patients is physical fit. It is crucial, absolutely crucial, that your hearing device, whether it's an earbud or a hearing aid, sits well in your ear and seals well. If you have a $10,000 hearing aid that's not sitting well in your ear, you might as well be wearing a $50 hearing aid. And I actually found out doing these measurements that the triple flange mushroom tip I've been wearing so happily for over 10 years doesn't fit my ear canal anymore. Now, in order to get good attenuation in the low frequencies, I have to use foam tips. And my measurements with the Verifit 2 show a 10 to 20 dB improvement in attenuation when I switched to foam tips. Ear canals are mostly made of cartilage and they will change shape and size over time. So yes, an ear tip that fits you about five years ago might not be fitting you so well anymore. I know that it could be difficult to tell exactly if it's fitting well, so this is another reason to contact your audiologist and talk to them about it. Both devices have a 15 dB mode. In this mode, sound is supposed to pass through naturally without any attenuation or amplification until it reaches a certain level. We'll look at the Music Pro Elite first. The stimulus was pink noise around 60 to 70 dB SPL. The yellow line in this graph shows us how the sound responded in my ear canal without any devices inside or an open ear. The green line shows the sound response with the Music Pro Elite in 9 dB mode. The green and yellow line match up quite well, which means when the input sound is around 60 to 70 dB, the output of the earplug is actually decently transparent or natural when the plug is in 9 dB mode. However, the specs suggest that this should be happening when the plug is in the other mode. 9 dB mode is actually supposed to amplify the sound, which it did not do here. The pink line is the plug in 15 dB mode, and you'll see the line is lower or below the yellow and the green line. It's attenuating the sound by about 6 dB. The website says it's supposed to pass through audio under 90 dB transparently, which it's not quite doing. It's attenuating. The second parameter I wanted to investigate was sound attenuation. Again, how much are these earplugs actually reducing? I measured pink noise around 85 dB SPL. In 9 dB mode, the green line, it attenuated sound by 9 to 12 dB. In 15 dB mode, the pink line, it attenuated sound by 12 to 17 dB. So, though the website says attenuation starts at 90 dB, which I assume they mean SPL, in my ears, what the probe mics were measuring, the plugs were actually attenuating by 9 to 17 dB, depending on the mode and the frequency. Then I measured music around 100 dB SPL with peaks up to 109. In 9 dB mode, the pink line, attenuation ranged from 10 dB in the lows to 20 dB above 4K. In 15 dB mode, the green line, attenuation ranged from 14 to 22 dB. The difference between the two modes was 2 to 4 dB, not quite the 6 I expected but we can at least be sure that these plugs are significantly attenuating the sound when the sound level is high. Finally, I did wanna look at amplification. The purpose of the amplification is supposed to be, let's say you're a conductor, you're wearing the earplugs and somebody in the back of the orchestra asks you a question, getting a little bit of amplification might help you to hear this person better. They're both supposed to apply 6 dB of amplification when you are in 9 dB mode for both devices. This measurement was made with music playing around 60 to 65 dB SPL. Like I mentioned before, when the Music Pro Elite is in 9 dB mode, shown here with the green line, it's supposed to amplify the sound by 6 dB. However, in my ears, neither with this measurement or many other measurements that I made that I'm not showing here, I could never get the Music Pro Elites to amplify anything. Now we'll look at the Music Pro. First, we'll look at transparency. This measurement was made with music playing at around 60 to 65 dB SPL. 
Again, the yellow line is the sound in my ear canal with no ear plug in or my open ear. The pink line is the Music Pro in 15 dB mode. The pink and yellow line match up pretty well, which means the in, when the input sound is around 65 dB SPL, the output of the Music Pro is decently transparent or natural, at least below 2K, after which it does attenuate the sound by up to 6 dB. What's the attenuation like in the Music Pro? Well, this measurement was made with music playing around 100 dB SPL and with peaks up to 109. In 9 dB mode, the green line attenuation ranged from 9 to 14 dB. In 15 dB mode, the pink line attenuation ranged from about 14 to 19 dB. The difference between the two modes was between 5 and 7, 7 dB, which is pretty spot on with the 6 dB value that's published. And finally, amplification in the Music Pro. I'm sorry I don't have a perfect graph for this one, but if you look at the pink line on the left-hand graph, that's the Music Pro in 15 dB mode with music playing at about 65 dB. And then on the right-hand side is when I switched the Music Pro to 9 dB mode, which is supposed to amplify sound by about 6 dB. So you can see that indeed in the lower frequencies at least, it is amplifying the sound by about 6 dB. And then in the higher frequency, it is increasing the sound compared to 15 dB mode, but it's not necessarily actually amplifying. I know it's all a bit confusing and I have had to look at these specs 50 times. The overall takeaway is that we can be confident that the earplugs are going to protect your hearing by at least 9 to 12 or 15 decibels. For your information, I didn't formally measure or test impulse sounds like rim shots or gunshots um, with these devices. I did perceive a limiter of sorts kick in with the Music Pro Elite, after which there would be a two to three second release time. The Edemotic website says that this limiter is fast and that immediately will release after the impulse sound happens, and I did not perceive that to be the case. Again, this was just a subjective perception. If you're having trouble deciding which earplug to go with, I would say the two deciding factors might be how badly you want a rechargeable device, which is what the Music Pro Elite is compared to the battery operated Music Pro. You can get those batteries at any drugstore. They're hearing aid batteries size 10. And also, if you want the ability to turn the earplugs completely off, the Music Pro Elite does have the ability to do that. You just press and hold the button and they completely power off. With the Music Pro, you have to either remove the batteries or open the battery doors. If these two features don't really matter, then I would recommend going with the Music Pro because there's a more consistent difference between the two modes. And with the Music Pro Elite, there was, there was less of a difference between the two modes, if that makes sense. Congratulations for getting through this pretty technical and very wordy video. Hopefully you're gonna go do something fun now. I don't know, like at least stretch at your desk.